Welcome back everyone to the Light and Life podcast, conversations on faith and life in downtown Colorado Springs. I'm your host again, Liza Cunningham, here with Pastor Tim McConnell. Hey, Liza. Hey, hey. It's good to be in the heart of downtown Colorado Springs. It sure is. (laughs) Always, always. Except for the rain today. It did rain today. It is, yeah. That was a bummer. I like the afternoon rains in Colorado. Do you? It's exciting. Why is that? Well, I've lived other places where it just rains all day, like... Oh, so you're saying it's like, when's it going to come? Yeah, it's like this big event. It gets like <laughs> dark over there and you think, oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Is mm-hmm. it going to be bad? Is it going to be big? Is it going to be, yeah. Speaking then, of rain. Rain. I realized that my sprinkler's on on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tried to turn it on and now I'm, and they didn't work. So now I'm scared that water's just been running underground for like three days. Oh, okay. Is that a thing? Could that happen? Maybe I can stop over. I might need you to. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tim. You, a pastor for the people. <laughs> Multiple skills. <laughs> so what are we talking about today, Tim? Working out. Working out. The title of today's episode is Working Out and God's Purpose for Our Bodies. That's right. That's right. How do you like to work out? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, so I belong to a gym. Okay. And uh, I try to get three days a week in. Notice how he didn't say what gym. Right. Uh, no, I'm Is not going to tell you. Is it a fake gym? Yeah, right. A gym <laughs> Just kidding. In Canada. <laughs> yeah. um, You're a three-day three um, I week try guy? to do three days a week. I try to get out there. And honestly, it's I do feel like if if I don't, do, it's one of my primary stress processing things. Mm. So I feel it. Like if I miss it, it isn't so much the the soft like feeling that you get in your body, yeah. you know, the drowsiness, I get that too, but it's more like the stress buildup. Uh-huh. So that makes me go. Okay. So I don't know. That's probably positive, but yeah. So I go to. <laughs> <laughs> that's a healthy the, outlet. It, it's I'd like say. a maybe it's like a, a a cow that if the calf doesn't feed on the milk, then it just explodes. No, it, that's right. how the stress feels. That's like what it's I heard. Be- <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's building up. It's building up. I got to do something, you know. And so, um, so yeah, I, I I have an app. Oh, I do. Does it just tell you tell- what to hit that day? Yeah, because I used to do the exact same thing every time. Okay. Because I one of my most important points is I don't want to think about working out. Ah. Uh, I okay. just I want to just do. Okay. And so I used to have the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. but that's not good for your body. So I found mm-hmm. this app and it just produces a workout for me. That's cool. And um, so I just hit it and I do it. And whatever it says to do, that's what I do. I don't question it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That That's the kind of structure I need. So what's yours? Um, I go to group fitness classes. I thought you belonged to like three gyms. Is well, that... so yes. Yeah. I belong to two okay. technically. Um. <laughs> And one of them's group fitness classes. Another one is just like a 24-hour open gym. Yeah. Um, but I am so intimidated to go into that open gym when there's a ton of people there. Oh. Because I'll use my app that I have for my other gym, for my group fitness class gym. Okay. And it tells you what to do? It tells me what to do, but some of the exercises look so silly. Yeah. So I'm wildly uncomfortable when yeah. there's so many people there. Whereas yeah. at the group fitness place, everyone's doing it, so it's not weird. Yep. I overanalyze. Yeah. I do. It's good for some of us to mm-hmm. look weird in front of others from time to time. <laughs> yeah, it's humbling. Yeah. I'll say. I had, I had one time I was on a trip with... Um, and I had this terrible back problem, like it was all locked up. Mm. So I had to go out in the middle of this, um, a public square in the, like in the market in a foreign country and do like these exercises with like a pole, the stretchy rope thing mm-hmm. and like the- That's what they call it. That's the, the stretchy official rope term. thing. That's mm-hmm. what my doctor called it. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and you look like a moron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I went in and told my, my pastor friend, like, I just look like a total goof out there. <laughs> He was like, and you survived. And that's, that's true. And that's probably good for you. Like, <laughs> oh, come on. So yeah. it's good for you. What? Why is working out good for you? Yep. What do you think? When is it? When is it healthy? When is it not? Mm, I think it's healthy when it's used in situations like yours, where you're using it maybe as a stress relief. I think it's not healthy when it becomes an obsession with your physical appearance, or if it becomes 
um, something that you're doing to like punish yourself. Because I come from, I mean, I know we've discussed this in the past, both sides of working out where it's like, I won't do anything and then I'll feel terrible and then, um, or I'd work out all the time and have like half to have two hours at a time every day or I'd feel like I, you know. So you'd obsess. I, I'd obsess over it and then it took over my life. And so what I realized is I was working out because I didn't like my body and I was like trying to fix it rather than working out because I love my body and want to take care of it. So I think oh. it's healthy when you want to take care of it and yeah. – um, get some what's what's it called? You release what? Endorphins. Endorphins. That's the word. That yes. might be. I don't even know if that's correct. No, that's that is correct. I was thinking. That's just a word I know. Yeah. No, that's the right one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, what do you think? What do you think is healthy versus not? Well, I think we've you know we've definitely got into a culture that's body obsessed, that's mm -hmm. appearance obsessed, that. Um, is uh, a lot of this is connected with the hypersexuality of our culture, mm -hmm. that I'm only a useful person in as much as I'm sexy and mm -hmm. attractive. And um, so I think both, um, when I was uh, uh, a, like a teenager, young adult, um, men, it was very rare for men to have body issues. And I think increasingly men also have body issues mm -hmm. where they get into an obsessive loop and, like you say, a conflict with their body. Like, I hate my body. Um, I want to punish my body. Um, I, so I get obsessive and, and idolatrous about it. Mm -hmm. And um, some of those people look really healthy. They yeah. look it. They look it. And inside their soul is, mm -hmm. is hurting, mm -hmm. and they are not happy in their skin. It's interesting um, that this is the topic today because I went on a walk with my new roommate. Her name's Lauren, and she is the best. Um, <laughs> but it's just so common um, to have insecurity from like a physique standpoint, right? Both male and female. Um, but a lot of us tend to just not talk about it, right? And the people that do talk about it, for whatever reason, it makes, you know, people in a group setting feel uncomfortable because they don't know what to say. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. like really taboo. But once you do get to talking, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a person, you find out that a lot of people have the same lies in their head about, about their body and like what it should or shouldn't look like or yeah. how you should or should eat or should or shouldn't exercise. And it it overtakes a lot of your brain power really like throughout a day. I remember, you know, being in a class in college and thinking like, what am I going to eat next and how am I going to burn it off? Like just, it just took over every single thought and then you couldn't yeah. truly be present. But she said something that was really, when I felt like I was having just a rough day with self image and she was like, Liza, we can't take our bodies to heaven with us. Yeah. And I remember thinking, that is beautiful. Like mm. you, and maybe not theologically sound when it comes I think to we'll, like- we'll get to some of that, right? <laughs> when it comes to our, yeah. the second coming. But right. um, I, in theory, like I understand what she's saying. Yeah. It's not, that's not what's gonna matter it at all. Yeah, it's not, it has its place, but it doesn't, it can't take the whole place. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I've always found it helpful to just say out loud, there are zero people in the world who are totally happy with their bodies. Yeah. Zero. So in some level, maybe because, um, you know, we, we have idealized thoughts that we want to project back on ourselves. And I think too, Liza, part of it is that you do have some capacity to shape your body. Like mm -hmm. your body is going to be an expression of choices that you make and Pa Absolutely. patterns and habits and and uh, we'll talk about that too but um but you uh, because you have some capacity 
I think you, we frustrate ourselves that we don't have total capacity to mm-hmm. like just wake up and turn my body into exactly what I want it to be. Because mm-hmm. some parts of your body will never change. Other parts of your body, you know, can only incrementally shift. And mm-hmm. some parts of your body are just, you know, you'll be happy with. And some parts of your body you'll always feel like, well, there's got to be something. There's always more. Better. To improve. Yeah. And, yeah. And I, and I believe that my, my perfect um, how God made me self, body, mind, soul, spirit, uh, is not going to feel this way. Like my body, when I'm when I'm in my resurrection state, when I'm in my afterlife state, when I'm in the kingdom of God, uh, my body and my soul will not be in conflict. My body will be a perfect expression and and obedient to my my soul, which is obedient to Christ, mm-hmm. which is amazing. Mm-hmm. And that's what I that's what your friend was saying. Like just mm-hmm. think one day, like you can't invest everything into your physical body. This isn't something mm-hmm. that that goes on, it's going to be um, changed. And But anyway, okay, so 1 Timothy 4.8, there is a workout verse. Did you know that? Um, I didn't until now. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. This is the workout verse. Um, for physical training is of some value, 1 Timothy 4.8. So, um, so that's good, right? Physical training is of some value. Um, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So it's a good thing. It can't be an ultimate thing. Mm. And then we're also told that our bodies are temples. That's famous, right? Yes. Like your body is a temple. And you've heard that. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You're, but what is it, a temple? What does that mean? Uh, do you not, First Corinthians six nineteen and 20, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So God's got a positive use, a positive purpose. It's not an accident that we have bodies. Mm -hmm. Like God wasn't, whoops. (laughs) Like this was totally God intends for us to have bodies. Uh Yeah. Yeah. I think too, back to the work outside of it is there is um, a discipline to it that is a, yeah. a real positive but there's you know when it comes to treating your body like a temple and yeah. really taking care of it that also means letting it rest yes. um, and I think that also means um, not yeah not letting it take control of everything else because a part of that uh, obsession with your self-image comes along a lot of other self-centered thoughts, and the focus yeah. becomes on you and right. less about. Um, I'm totally focused on my appearance and how people are looking at me and how I'm perceived, not not how I communicate with yeah. other people, not how I show God's love, not how I'm glorifying God. It's all about how I appear. Yeah. Um, or whoever is, is struggling with something like that. Yeah. So that's a a mindset even in reading First Corinthians six nineteen and twenty. Yeah, your body bodies is a are temple. temples. Treat it as such, and it's not the temple that is worshipped, though. It's the God. Yeah, that it's the it's what's inside. Like I so, shouldn't worship my body. I should worship right the Lord that's living within the me. Holy Spirit that's with within that mm-hmm. that temple. Yeah. So one of the big problems with this that even seeps into Christian thought, seeps into modern thought, is uh, a real um, dualism of spirit and flesh or body and soul that as if these are two totally different things. There's um, uh, People will talk about this. There is an ancient school of thought called Gnosticism. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. Yes, so it's that idea, and the main thing, there's a lot to Gnosticism. I mean, you could, it's, it's actually pretty fascinating, but, um, but the main idea that sort of um, gets pulled out of that and talked about is this idea of the dualism of the body and soul, because they were really hot on uh, what was ultimately a, an idea from Plato, that, that your fleshly body is, is really uh, much less than, not, value, not as valuable as your mind, your spirit, and so the body and the spirit are two totally radically differentiated things. And in fact, you know, 
you, you should, if you're spiritual enough, you would just neglect, dis, disregard your body. You wouldn't see your body as something that's valuable at all. And so breaking this apart, breaking this in two, it's actually seeped into Christian thinking and non-Christian thinking, but but the, the Christian doctrine is, is that we're not just um, souls walking around in flesh suits. We are body and soul. Our bodies are a part of us, and God's body is as much a gift, your body is as much a gift from God as your soul. And so God gave you your body uh, for, with purpose. He has a positive purpose for it. And uh, a couple of points on this, just to get us going, then we're going to dump into about six positive uses of the body. Great. Okay. So how do we know that God cares about bodies? Well, A, we know that because God created bodies. God made us body and soul in creation. He made us, you know, out of the material of the earth, and then he breathed the soul into us. But that was not to say, you're these two components, and I'm going to sort of link you together for a minute, then, and then I'm going to you know, get rid of the body part. No, he, he loved the body, he made the body, he says, very good, and then he breathed life into it. And to be a person is not to just be a soul or just be a body, but to be body and soul together. Hmm. We know that because we know God cares about the body because Jesus took up flesh in the incarnation. He, he chose to become a body. So he could, didn't have to do that, right? I mean, right. He, 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 he chose to have a human body. He, and then, probably more importantly than that, because you could just say, well, theologically, you could say, well, Jesus had to take up flesh because flesh is sinful, and so he took up flesh, and then he lived perfectly in it, and then he killed that flesh on the cross as a sacrifice. You, and so you could say, see, he, he hates the body just as much as, as anybody else. But he took that flesh with him up into the eternal kingdom. So even more than creation and the, the incarnation, when you look at the resurrection and the ascension, you have proof that Jesus says your, your body really matters because mm-hmm. I'm taking my body into the eternal kingdom. And he went up into heaven in the, in the ascension. So um, God made us to have bodies. Um, there's huge problems that erupt when we separate the body and the soul too much. And we see these in in society today where someone says, um, my body and my true identity are two totally different things, right? Right. And that's, so the Christian doctrine is that they're, they're united and, um, and God made us with bodies to be a person, body, and soul. Mm-hmm. And as you say, even in, uh, in heaven, like uh, we don't just send the soul up and the body goes into the dirt. That's what happens in the short term. But in the long term, something else is happening. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the reuniting. Yeah, yeah. Of your glorified body. Yeah. So you've have you dug into that? And so it. I'm going to be honest. It freaks me out. Yeah. It does. It freaks me out a little. I think. Is it zombie? Like you're thinking? Okay. Well, okay. You know what? I'm I'm thinking of to be coming honest up, with coming you. Coming up out of the grave. You know, I'm being a little quiet. Yeah. Because I just saw um, this article of. I don't know how I get in this black hole of the internet, but I do. This guy is researching head transplants. Ooh. So they will take, you know, a body that's brain dead and a brain, the head of a human, you know, who is having like cancer all over their body okay. and they'll just or paralyze or combine them and it's proving to be they think you can do it? Yeah. Oh. They do. And so that just, I mean, any kind of like reuniting or anything like that, I just get like yeah. the ick a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. about it. Um, yeah, I don't know how the... that how that works. Are we, you know, whose soul right. is now? I don't know. It That freaks me out. But the reuniting in the second coming, we'll just table that for another day. We'll table but that. That's I, a whole I mean, thing. I would, I would categorize it just quickly, under God's power of creation. So if God can create in the first place, it's pretty much creation again when he reunites us with our physical bodies for eternity. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's not like he's got to find like every soul, every molecule mm-hmm. that was part of you when you died or something. 
Yeah. He'll recreate you, but but we oh. will be reunited with. See, that makes me think of like cremation, and that makes me think of all. Anyway, I know that's I know. a lot. I, it's a lot. It's but a I lot. do think I think selfishly, when it comes to like your glorified heavenly body in union with Christ. What first comes to my mind is like, I will have no cellulite. I will be, which is just such a vain way to think of it. And God's not bound by that. It's going to be beautiful. Like our our own our own desire, or like our own sort of uh, sense of what we ought to be, is tainted by sin. Absolutely. Absolutely. So (laughs) it's like, you know, but but the the real peaceful reassurance is that. It's going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And we don't even know what perfect is, really. No, not at but, all. Not even close. And not only is it going to be perfect, but I think the more important part is, you know, where Scripture talks about that you are in conflict with your flesh. And flesh is how the New Testament talks about the disobedient habits that are in your body, mm. the disobedient habits that you have created. And so flesh is disobedient habits. But when you come to a resurrection body, your body's going to be perfectly obedient to your perfectly obedient soul. And we can't even imagine that. No. There's a church father, Augustine, it's pretty fun at the end of the city of God. I mean fun. Put it put fun in quotes. Okay. But <laughs> Got it. But, Noted. but he's like, what's this gonna be like? And he's and it's it's he's literally describing like we might be able to fly. Like we might be able to, we don't know what we're gonna do. That you would know? rock. Because you yeah. see everything that Jesus did in his body and you're like, well we can obviously do all that. And mm-hmm. then Jesus said you can do more stuff than that, you know? <laughs> and so it's it's just kind of fun to think about. But all right, so so God has positive the body's not an accident. Uh, to despise your body is not right. But to idolize your body is not right either. So six positive uses of the body. Um, why did God give us a body? I mean, I think we all sometimes we wonder, like, what? why do I have to deal with this this body? And none of us is happy with it again. Like, So, okay, so positive use of the body. Number one, it's our way of interaction with the world and with one another. Um, I don't know. Should we say anything more about that? I think it, that's... Kind of sits, stands by itself. Yeah, I feel good about that. Yeah. Hit me with two. Like if you were just like Casper the ghost, you see how frustrated Casper the ghost yes. is. Yes. Yeah. I'd be irritated. Or, or if awful. you if you go back to Ghost, the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze. I have not seen that. He was very frustrated. Uh. And you would see how frustrating it is. <laughs> it reminds <laughs> me of the prank that parents will play on their kids where they'll like remove a blanket and act like they... <laughs> The kid disappeared, and the kid starts freaking out yeah. and scared that they're invisible. That's a great prank. Oh my gosh, you should look at those videos. I've never they're done hilarious, that. but yeah, that's yeah. Terrifying. So God obviously He gave us our body to be able to interact with one another. Mm-hmm. I mean, facial expression, talking, hugging, touching, going, going from place to place. I mean, mm-hmm. um, so that's number one. Okay. Number two, and these are just what I thought of. You might have others. <laughs> Or a listener, you might have others, um, but these are just what I thought of. Number two would be, it's our first act of stewardship and care for God's creation. So if we're if we're made in the image of God and we're here to care for God's creation and to steward God's creation, He gives us our bodies as the first place that we learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes, and what what's fun to grasp fun in quotations too, is that the way to take care of that is learned behavior here on earth. Yeah. Um, Like there are some instinctual things that we do, like you're, you know how to swallow food. You know how to, you know, once you're born, you know how to There's things that kick in. You know how to breathe. You know how to blink. Right. Um, But in terms of like, the discipline side, you learn that from other people. Like, or you're raised in a way that teaches you right from wrong that can develop either really healthy patterns or really unhealthy patterns. Yeah. Um, And I think sometimes those healthy or unhealthy patterns can be a little bit relative. Sure. I don't know. Um, Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, but I think and, it is our first act of care, but I'm thinking of a 
a mother who immediately takes care of their baby, that mm-hmm. same baby who has instincts, that's that baby's first experience of life is being cared for, is a body being cared for. So yeah. when you come into the world. And if that doesn't happen. And if that doesn't happen. Or it happens in a broken way. Mm-hmm your flesh will carry that pattern. And we'll, yes. that's one of the, we'll talk about that too. But yeah, so it's it's something that God gives you to care for. And we're supposed to learn how, and part of growing as Christians is to grow in our um, reflection of God's concern for his creation. So to care for our bodies is a stewardship that teaches us about caring for resources that God gives us or creation care itself, the world around us. Like we should be, we should, Take a take care of gifts that God gives us. Um, number three, our prime it's our primary vehicle for experiencing God's delight. I mean, you think about your five senses, and it's kind of ridiculous, right? Uh-huh. Like you study life forms that like just crawl along the bottom of the ocean or something, or the bottom of your shoe, and like, why did God give us these beautiful five senses and all that they bring us of joy? Um, so I think it's I think it's clear that our physical bodies were God's uh, vehicle for us to experience His delight. Yeah. yeah. So we got to keep going, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So so four, and this is really cool. I mean, I've I've tried to study more and more in this. I'm still trying to learn more about this. Uh, some people call it the plasticity of the of the body and the mind. But the body, so this is number four, the body forms habits which can nurture us in virtue or, unfortunately, in vice. So you every, an example of that? Everything you do in your body creates a track. And so, like putting a track on your bike in the mud, it's like every choice you make mm. creates a track. So if you spend six weeks eating three Oreos at three o'clock in the afternoon. Like your body has a way of tracking that and it creates these neuropathways and biological expectations Mm -hmm. that you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. And so if one day you don't have three Oreos at three (laughs) o'clock... You lose your mind. (laughs) You lose your mind. You're like, the whole world falls apart. It's like, what? It's like me and Diet Coke. And, and that's just a little picture of this amazing plasticity of the body. So in the same way, I mean, to, so very pastory here, but uh-huh. in the same way, if you go to church every Sunday morning for six weeks in a row, literally your body is in some sense going to expect that that's what you're going to do. Just like going to the gym. Like if you go to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday at, at seven in the morning, your body is going to, on the day that you don't do that, your body's going to kind of speak up. Like, what's going on? I thought we were doing this. And there's literal neuropathways and, and uh, physical plasticities that your body develops. And I think it's an amazing capacity that God gave us. And the thing is, as I say here, and we'll have to move on, but um, you can set habits that lead to virtue or that nurture virtue and starve vice, or obviously you can set habits that nurture vice and starve virtue. So I think it's cool. Totally. Um, Number five, uh, the body determines the sexes and provides for sex and reproduction, the propagation of the species. God made us male and female, and um, obviously the body is, is that expression of that, and, it's, and it becomes, uh, as Scripture outlines, uh, a model of God's love through Jesus of the church, where the church is the bride of Christ and Jesus Christ is the groom and so this relationship between male and female, of course, there's so much we can go into, right? Mm-hmm. But that's part of the human body and how God created his purpose for the body. And then lastly, number six, um, the body puts limits on us. And those limits are for our good. You can only be one place at a time. You can only have so much energy. You can only be awake for so many hours. And these limits are actually for our good because we would have a tendency to make gods out of ourselves. But God has given us these physical bodies actually to set limits on our lives. And those limits inform us 
that God is God and, and we are not. So that's, that I think. That's beautiful. You like that? Yeah, that was beautifully worded. Well, thank you. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Others? Is anything I missed? Or no, I'm wanna... sure I'll think of some later, but yeah, that was awesome. Okay. Thank you. So working out. Why should, should we work out? I think so. All right. Yes. Yeah. Take care of our bodies. Yeah. But do it with a posture of care and yeah. not a posture of um, punishment or self um, absorbent self. Yeah, yeah. Being self absorbed. Y- mm-hmm. Thank you. Words are hard, guys. Yeah. So take care of your bodies. God gave them to you. <laughs> Amen. Um, well, that about sums up our time. Thank you so much, Tim, for. Um, your wise words. And if you're enjoying these conversations on faith and life, please leave us a review so that more people can find this podcast. And we'd love for you to join it, join in with us in the conversation. So um, if there's something you want to discuss, please feel free to send an email to podcast at firstprezcos.org. And if you're watching the video version on YouTube, leave a comment below and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode when we discuss Sabbath. Rest is resistance. Yes, it is. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in two weeks. All right. Go work out, everybody. (laughs) But not too much. Hit the gym. Not too much. (laughs)